in this learning objective we will compare the raster and vector data models and compare them to see where they are useful and um, what are some of the uh, ways uh, some of the disadvantages of them so um, this is a table from uh, from the textbook and it's a very nice table it compares um, the the two in a in a in in categorically and there's a couple of these categories that are compared between the two and I have these pictures on the side to to kind of emphasize some of these um, categories so if we look at the um, the vector features here point uh, polygon and polyline and on the other side we have the raster or the matrix um, if we were just looking at one single features positional precision we can see that this is much more accurate if we were looking at points or the boundary of a certain region you can be very accurate in how you uh, define that whereas if we go to the raster this precision is very much dependent upon the size of the grid cell to be really accurate you need to be very precise so let's say if you were trying to identify um, uh, a coin on the surface then one meter resolution is not even going to be able to um, locate a coin on the surface. So um, when we talk about positional precision, then vector data has is very precise. But now if we look at the attribute precision, then um, the, the attribute precision of the vector um, is not as good as the raster. So why is that so? Well, raster data, because of its form as a matrix, can represent continuous data. For example, if we were talking about temperature, we can create a grid where the variation of the numbers can be represented by nice uh, color shades, and you can very precisely see how temperature is varying from point to point. Whereas if we were trying to do the same thing for the continuous data in using polygons, it will be very difficult. There will be very many polygons and pretty much we will end up creating points uh, with temperature measurements. So the attribute precision is not very good for con continuous data in case of vectors, but it's very good um, if we were using raster. If we were doing some kind of analysis, the the way the vector data is saved in uh, a database management system makes it very easy for query, figuring out who is adjacent to who, finding the area of different shapes, um, but it's not very good if we had a continuous data saved in a vector format. On the other hand, if we were did, uh, doing analysis um, on the raster data, then the query is very slow because there are so many grid cells and each one has an identifier if we were trying to find a certain point with certain criteria it would be very difficult but if we were trying to find the neighborhood of a certain location it could be very fast uh, we can do uh, continuous variable modeling very well we can do raster calculation for example I could add two matrices very easily in a computer um, but if I had to do the same thing in the vector model, it, it could get, it could have some challenges. Um, um, if we look at the data structure, the vectors are saved in a very complex way. So if I were saving these three layers, I would have to come up with some model to save points, another model to save polygons, and then each polygon has many points that need to be saved. Likewise, a polyline has to be saved with where I have to create a data structure that can handle all of these variabilities. Whereas if I go to raster, all I need is a series of numbers saved in a computer in the form of a matrix. So this is much simpler um, compared to vector. Um, I will let you cover the other four as a homework and um, understand what is the advantage and disadvantage of the vector and uh, raster if we were looking at the storage requirements, the coordinate conversion, the network analysis, and output quality. So 
um, the other thing that we 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 need to a question arises is that well if I have a vector data can I go back and forth between raster and vector well that is the beauty of these two data sets that we can convert back and forth and based upon our need can create the raster data from vector or the vector data from raster so for example these points here are they, these 13 points would be only 13 values in a point type or a vector type data set but if we go to raster we'll have a grid for the whole area and 13 of these cells will have the value corresponding to the point so as you can see that um, the raster data is not very good if these are sporadic points um, it's much more it's using much more computer space likewise um, polylines can be rasterized um, wherever there's a line we have a value and the background has a different value again um, polygon on the other hand um, has much utility in raster form too because it's covering the whole area. Now if we have raster we can create these polygons back. Um, if we have raster lines we can create the lines back. So uh, these are the methods that are available in GIS that can help us take raster data to vector and vector to raster. And a lot of times we are trying to um, to either do some uh, modeling that requires everything to be in a single format and in that case um, we, we, we can go back and forth for example if we were overlaying and finding out where certain areas overlap then vector data would be much useful and we will convert everything into vector data model on the other hand if we were doing calculations say adding matrices or multiplying matrices then raster uh, data model would have advantages so we will in that case convert all of our vectors into raster type uh, data set